So Jesus loves bacon. That's what this tells us tonight, right? That now everything is clean. Notice though on that where I read that you didn't see it, but verse 19 where it says, and Jesus made all food clean, it's in parentheses, which means that not all people agree that that was actually in the text. That's Mark's reference or inference from what Jesus said, that it's not things from outside the body that defile a person, it's from what comes within. Jesus did not make all foods clean. We have no evidence at all that Jesus himself ever violated the Moses law. Jesus was a good Jew, so he probably did not violate the Mosaic law as it was written except in the instances we have in the Bible for that. But he tried in all of the ways that he could to live up to the intent of the law and tried to show that to everyone around him. So Jesus did not deny the validity of either Mosaic law or the general or individual commandments thereof. What he does reject, and we hear tonight in our gospel lesson, is the interpretation from these Pharisees and scribes. And certain interpretations that people got from the law and the way that they understood it is what Jesus rejected. It's not because they were wrong in doing the things that they did. It was that they deviated from or obscured the intent of the law, the reason God gave it to us, to help keep us in line with him. They took it to a point it didn't need to go. Because, see, Jesus speaks about human traditions, right? He calls what the Pharisees and the scribes are doing traditions human traditions. He speaks of this in verse 6 and 7. And in verse 5, the Pharisees and the scribe call into question the disciples because they don't wash their hands before they eat. Now we all know, especially parents, you have to tell your kids, right, three or four times, go wash your hands. You're getting ready to sit down to eat dinner? Go wash your hands. Go wash your hands. Go wash your hands. Right? Because we know that you shouldn't really eat with dirty hands. Why? Because you'll get sick. Right? So we should wash our hands. It's good practice. But the Pharisees call into question the disciples not because they weren't washing their hands, but because they weren't keeping the traditions that the Pharisees thought needed to be kept in order to keep their relationships right with God. So when the Pharisees call into question these disciples, not only do they call into question the disciples, but they also then call into question Jesus. Right. Because Jesus is their teacher, and Jesus is the one that's supposed to tell them what to do and show them the right way to live. It's interesting, though. I want you to go home tonight and read all of the Old Testament. Really? That's all? <laughs> do you realize how long it would take you to read the Old Testament? <laughs> A long time. Yeah, just take my word for it, then. It would be nice for you to look, but it, just take my word for it. And nowhere in all of the Old Testament is there any laws about washing your hands before you eat. Nowhere. It does mention in Exodus 30, chapter 30, verses 18 through 21, speaking about a bronze basin that will be set up for the priests to wash their hands and their feet before they go into the temple to offer sacrifice or to do any kind of worship to God. But nowhere in all of the Old Testament is there any laws or commandments that say that a person should wash their hands before they eat. This is a human tradition that the Pharisees and scribes have and a custom of their day. Right? It's a custom of the day that these Jews, these Pharisees and scribes are upholding. The washings of cups, of pots and copper vessels and dining couches it talks about in our reading. These are all things that have been set up by the Pharisees extra traditions added on to the Mosaic Law. It's not even in the Mosaic Law. So Jesus, in response to their question, quotes to them Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. And in this passage, Isaiah introduces a contrast between lips and mouth and the heart. And Jesus takes this contrast and builds upon it to talk about the issue at hand here, being one of defilement. And he shows how a human body can become polluted. And simply put, to Jesus, impurity is a matter of heart, not a matter of mouth. All about this, not about anything that goes in here. Right? Because you see, to Jesus, 
Hand washing and the foods that we consume are not the issue that he's talking to here. It's not the main concern. In Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 23, which we just read, it speaks more plainly about the source of defilement that Jesus is trying to hit upon. It's more internal than external. And it's more about who you are than the foods or filth you try to avoid. Right? To be clear, Jesus does not dismiss the issue of defilement as insignificant. He's not passing off the Pharisees and saying what they're talking about has no significance in anything. He does not declare the Mosaic Law unimportant. He disagrees with these scribes and Pharisees on their interpretation of the laws and the traditions that have been set up by their forefathers. He reasserts the law's basic concern to be about restraining evil and avoiding defilement, not about keeping the rules. Yet here's the problem for most of us. Evil and defilement stem from places rather deeply embedded within our very own selves. It, really, it is really about the evil output of our own hearts. And as we've probably, most of us heard, any of us who are over than 30 have probably heard it, we have met the enemy, and he is us. Right. Pogo. Go Google it, kids. Pogo. P-O-G-O. We have met the enemy, and he is us. It's talking about lip service doing what needs to be done in order for people to see you doing the things that need to be done so that they think that you're the kind of person that you want them to think you are. Did you get that? It's about doing the things that need to be done in order that the people see you doing the things that need to be done so the people think that you are the person that you want them to think that you are. I Don't ask me to say it again. I don't think I could. We do things so that people see us, but that's not what Jesus is talking about. And the true defilement of who we are and the people that we could be comes from deep within us. It's not anything that outside of us that could come into us. Because you see, in this passage of Scripture, it's about the human. The anthropos is the word in the Greek. It's not about the scribes, it's not about the Pharisees, and it's not about the law. What Jesus subjects to the fiercest criticism in our passage here is the human being, anthropos. Because you see the word anthropos, human being or person, occurs 11 times in the span of Mark chapter 7, verses 7 through 23. 11 times the word is used in 14 verses. So the issue is not how or what we should eat, But it is an internal battle with the corruption that is within all of us. A corruption that can choke the life out of any traditions, that can turn traditions into an enemy of God, that can remove our focus from following God to following the rules so that people see us to be the people that we want them to see us, that we think that we are, that we want them to think that we are. Right? This corruption or evil belongs to our own human hearts. And in Mark, it's not to be blamed on a diabolical entity. It's not to be blamed on somebody outside of ourselves. In Mark, evil is not the result of the devil lurking in the shadows. Truly evil intentions dwell not only within society's most notorious figures, but if we're honest with ourselves, deep within each and every one of us and those that we love and trust most fervently. Right? I don't know how many of you have seen it. I'm going to try not to give any spoilers. If I do, I'm sorry. The movie Noah deals quite literally with this. About how society is evil. And how God needs to do something in order to destroy it. And take care of what we've done to His good creation. It's a movie that deals with sin and evil and how we ourselves deal with it and how we ourselves see who we are in this place and in this time and how we can be creations of God, but also think about our own self-intentions and our own self-needs and our own self-wants. And it's all about us and not about the person sitting next to us. It's an interesting dichotomy to think about the destruction of the world and know that it's for the good of all creation. 
Because you see, we have seen the enemy. And we see him every morning or her every morning when we look in the mirror. Because if we're truly honest with ourselves, the biggest person that we have to deal with or that we have to combat with is ourselves. Because we know that it is not what we eat or anything from without of us that defiles us. And it's not saying that, the, that everything is good and that the law is just void. You know, if we wanted to be... It's not about being Christian or Jew. It's about what is actually deep within us and how we live our lives. Because you see, in Mark, we are our own worst enemy. But thanks be to God that we have a Savior of the world ready and willing to help us live the life that God has called us to. And if we can only follow Him and not the rules, and not do things to make people think that we are the person that we want them to think that we are, but do the things because that's what actually is coming out of us, then that is going to lead us to the life that He actually has given us to live. And He will show us in the world the love and mercy that only He can give to each and every one of us. Amen.